his own beast, took him to an inn, and then told the innkeeper, take care of him. I'm going to give you some money right now, and if you incur any more charges, when I come back this way, just let me know what my bill is. Why are you taking care of this stranger that I just picked up on the road? I want you to put his medical expenses on my tail. And when I come back this way, I'll pay the right fare. Only Jesus can show us that God can send us help from the utmost unlikely of places. Jesus shows us that for everybody that passed us up by chance, God got somebody he's sending with a charge. And that's how we made it. We didn't make it according to the chance folk, but we made it according to somebody who God had sent with a charge. Somebody was charged with encouraging me and telling me to keep on going. Somebody was charged with watching out for me and making sure I kept myself together. Somebody was charged with picking me up when I fell down. Somebody was charged with holding me up when I was too weak to hold myself up. Somebody was charged with calling me and checking up on me. Somebody was charged with taking me by the hand and walking with me when I didn't know which direction to go. I thank God for the folk who got a charge. When you look at the Bible, the Bible shows us that there were various people who helped other people because they understood that a charge from God meant that they had to keep love their neighbor as they love themselves. And so they just couldn't pass anybody up. When you look at the life of Elijah, even when he came upon a certain little woman, even when he was hungry himself, the man of God knew that he had a charge to keep and a duty to fulfill. And while that woman just had a little measure of meal and a little cruise of oil, when he came by her way, he told her, if you just fix me mine first, then the Lord will take care of the rest. And the Bible says when she did what the man of God told her to do, that a barrel of meal never ran out, and that cruise of oil never ran dry, because Elijah had a charge to keep and a duty to fulfill. When you look at the Apostle Paul in 2 Timothy chapter 4, he charges Timothy before God, who's going to judge the quick and the dead at his appearing and in his kingdom. And he charges Timothy to preach the word. He tells him, preach it in season and preach it out of season. In other words, preach it when they want to hear it and then preach it when they don't want to hear it. Preach it when they say amen and preach it when they're sitting there looking at you like you're crazy. Preach it when they shout hallelujah and preach it when they're saying crucify you because if you go help somebody you've got to keep this charge you've got to be able to preach the word in season you've got to be able to preach it out of season you've got to be able to reprove rebuke exhort with all known suffering and doctrine because Timothy the time is coming when men will not endure sound doctrine but they will heap to themselves teachers uh, have them itching ears uh, and they will turn away their ears from the truth uh, 
I've been turned on the fables and can't nobody be saved by no fable. Can't nobody be saved turning to no lie. And so if you're going to help them, Timothy, you got to keep this charge before God. And that's the same charge that I'm, I'm dispensing from the word of God this morning. You've got a charge to keep, Mary Lane. You've got a duty to fulfill. And your charge and your duty is not to pass by folk on the other side. You've got to stop and help somebody. Jesus said that he did not come to call the righteous, but he came to call some sinners to repentance. Don't be shocked when a prostitute walks through these doors because Jesus said that he came for some sick folk. Don't be shocked when folk come up in here and you can smell last night's alcohol still on their breath because Jesus said he came for some sick folk. Don't be shocked when you find out that some folk come up in here still high from last night's high because Jesus said that he's coming for some sick folk. He's coming for some folk who got some problems in their life. He's coming for some folk who are having problems in their marriage. He's coming for some folk who's having problems with their children. He's coming for some folk who having problems on their job. He's coming for some folk who got some problems with their health. He's coming for some folk who got some problems with their self. Most of our problems, it's not mama, it's not daddy, it's not sister, it's not brother, but it's me, oh Lord, that's standing in the need of prayer. And so because sometimes we are our own problem, don't you dare pass me by when you see I got a problem. If the problem is me, then just let me know that I'm my own problem. If I'm causing my own misery, then just bend down for enough to pick me up. And while you got your arms around me, pray for me. Because there's some showing up power in prayer. I mean, pray for me when you get up in the morning. Pray for me when the new day hour comes. Just keep on praying before you lay down at night. Because there is some power. There's some showing up power in prayer. And the reason why I made it as far as I made it is because somebody was praying for me. Somebody went to God on my behalf. Somebody took my name to the throne of the grace of God and kept me before the Lord night and day. And that's what kept my mind sane. That's what kept me clothed in my right mind. That's what gave me the strength to get up and keep on going. Because there's some showing up power in prayer. I mean, when Hannah prayed, the Lord gave her baby Samuel. When Daniel prayed, God locked the jaws the the, the of the lions and they couldn't do him no harm. When Shadrach prayed, the God kept him from the fiery furnace. When David prayed, he knocked Goliath off his feet and he took his head off with his own sword. Oh, when the children of Israel prayed, they came out of 400 years of past mastery with the master's goods as their own. When Jesus prayed, the Bible said that sweat dropped from his forehead like big drops of blood to the ground. When Jesus prayed, salvation became available for all men. And the angel sung good peace on earth and good will toward men. When Jesus prayed, the lame got up and started walking. When Jesus prayed, the blind were able to see again. When Jesus prayed, the dead got up at the grave and were reunited with their family. Oh, my friend, 
things. Uh, there is some power in prayer. So rather than talking about me, uh, just pray for me. Uh, if you want to see me make it, uh, then just pray to God to help me make it. Uh.